Hello, welcome to the Monday, November 26, 2018 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. While many of you, like me, probably took the long weekend off, our European handlers stayed busy and published a number of interesting posts over the last couple of days. I want to point out one post in particular by Remco about attacks against Docker APIs. Now, this is something I have mentioned before. By default, Docker doesn't actually listen for network connections, but it can easily be configured to do so. If you decide to expose Docker's HTTP interface on port 2375 TCP, be ready that you will be scanned. And Remco is walking through an exploit attempt of a Docker API. The end result here is that an attacker will be able to launch arbitrary Docker containers. Of course, they're going to use this for crypto coin mining. And in some cases, attackers use the ncroc.io service in order to expose some of these internal servers in particular to then, of course, have easier access to them. And yes, crypto coin mining certainly is still a thing among attackers. Crypto coin prices have been depreciating quite quickly lately. But remember, attackers, they don't pay for power. So even if they get only a fraction of what they used to get in the past, well, uh, it's still still worth it to them. And Matthew Bing with Arbor Networks has a nice write-up about how the recent Yarn vulnerability in Hadoop is being exploited by botnets. In particular, a Mirai-like botnet apparently has zoomed in on this vulnerability and added it to its repertoire. That's something we have seen with Mirai anyway, where yes, in the beginning, it was just going after these simple Telnet and SSH usernames and passwords. Well, as that market apparently has tried up somewhat or as the writers of the code have gotten a little bit more time to add more features to the code it was published, they are now also zooming in on various web vulnerabilities. And this Hadoop yarn vulnerability is a very simple code injection vulnerability. So very easy to exploit. All it takes is a little bit of JSON and copy paste the code that you would like to execute on the Hadoop server. Now, Hadoop, of course, is quite a step up from the Internet of Things that Mirai was usually going after. Hadoop, if you're not familiar with it, it's a very large distributed file system, sometimes also referred to as a NoSQL database, but it's something that typically runs on pretty expensive hardware. Of course, crypto coin mining comes again to mind here, but uh, also the good connectivity of many of these servers, of course, is ideal for denial of service, which made Mirai famous originally. And then we got a new variant of the Rowhammer vulnerability that can also affect ECC memory. ECC memory or error correcting memory uses simple parity checks in order to make sure that memory didn't get accidentally altered. And that's the key here. It's really just like many checksums and parity checks about accidental corruption, not about intentional corruption. Now, if you just flip individual bits as this this is what Rowhammer usually does. Uh, things uh, sort of can get corrected by ECC and the attack is not effective. If you flip two bits, uh, then the software will just crash. Uh, if you flip three bits, well, uh, then ECC is really at its end and is no longer able to detect the attack. The problem is that as an attacker, you don't necessarily know whether or not certain bits are susceptible to being flipped or or not. The trick that these researchers apply is they first try to only flip one bit. That of course doesn't affect the software. The software still runs. The memory corrects the error, but that error correction takes time. So by looking at the timing, the attacker is then able to figure out which bits can be flipped and which bits cannot be flipped until they have a set of three useful bits that are worth flipping. And 
then they're able to launch the row hammer attack again. So pretty tricky exploit, uh, not much really you can do about it at this point. Now, how vulnerable you are really depends on what memory you're using and there is no real easy table to sort of look up which memory is more or less vulnerable to a row hammer. On the other hand, uh, you should be able to log any ECC errors and that may give you a hint at least that some attack is underway or maybe that just your memory needs to be replaced because it's starting to become faulty. And just as a reminder, if you missed it because it came out on Wednesday, there is a critical flash vulnerability. It needs to be patched. A patch was released on Wednesday. So make sure you get this patch rolled out quickly. That's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.